Here we are, earned it fair and square. Now guys, I'm not sure how long I want STFU on my truck, but we'll replace it with a 13.1 as soon as I get home. I've officially run my first timed half marathon. Wait until you hear what my time was. All right guys, here I am in the hotel the night before my very first half marathon. Last week I did a video showing you guys everything that I've done up to this point to prepare for it, but tonight's video is all about everything I'm doing the day before the race so that I have all the cards stacked in my favor. To give you guys a little bit of context here, I'm a natural bodybuilder at heart. I've done seven natural bodybuilding shows up to this point. And in doing these shows, I've developed some techniques, some of these very techniques I'll be using tonight to get ready for this half marathon. See, before a bodybuilding show, what you wanna do is look your best on stage. And that means that you're gonna be doing a lot of specific techniques to get your body stage ready. These are actually the exact same techniques that can be applied to racing. They're actually a one-to-one -one perfect match. So for me, this is almost no different than doing a bodybuilding show the very next day. So there's gonna be three major factors going into any performance-related activity, whether it's a bodybuilding show, doing races, or doing powerlifting meets. All of these things are gonna have the same criteria. First things first, you wanna be well hydrated. Second, you wanna have your electrolytes, which means you gotta have salt. And three, you wanna max out on glycogen, which means you're gonna be having a lot of carbohydrates. For this race that I've got tomorrow, I did a carbohydrate load. What this means, I had an abnormally high amount of carbohydrates. Today, my target was to have about 600 grams of carbs, which does come out to be 2,400 calories, not including any fats or protein. Today, I probably had somewhere between four and 5,000 calories. I woke up up this morning with my normal protein pancakes I ended up having two servings of these at lunch I had a slice of pizza and a chicken bake from Costco and just now I got back from having sushi the reason you want to do this is because your body runs on glucose especially for performance sports most people depending on their height and also their body frame can store anywhere between four and six hundred grams of carbohydrates as their maximum but if you've been doing something like I do which is the ketogenic diet your body can actually slingshot these carbohydrates way above their normal threshold. This means that while I would normally max out at about 600 grams of carbohydrates, for a very short limited period of time, I might be able to get my carbohydrate storage as high as 11 or even 1200 grams of carbs. That's glucose stored in the muscle. If you play video games or if you're familiar with anime, consider for a moment that this is like going Super Saiyan or having a character use their special ability that gives the character momentary abilities way beyond their normal threshold, but that's very limited and it doesn't last a long time. You can't be in a super compensated position for very long, which is why the carb load typically happens 48 hours from the event whether it's a bodybuilding show or in my case a half marathon so with that i've done the carbohydrate load but what type of carbohydrates do i target oddly enough when it comes to sports performance you actually want to avoid fruits and vegetables pretty much at all costs the reason for this is that fiber in particular is going to hamper your ability to perform it's true for bodybuilding shows because your gut gets extended and you don't have abs it's also true in performance sports as well you don't want to be running a marathon with your gut extended it's gonna make it really hard to maneuver out there you don't want to be struggling with indigestion in the middle of a race this is why the most of the carbohydrates came from the day before tomorrow i'm going to get up and go i don't want to be working on any food while i'm doing my running so i make sure to get everything in tonight be very well hydrated make sure i've got all of my salts tonight so that when i wake up in the morning my stomach is flat and empty and that really reduces the chances of me having any emergency bowel movements during the race or getting sick in general. So this is why I targeted things like pancakes in the morning, slices of pizza for lunch, and sushi for dinner. Now you guys know me from other videos, I'm a bacon man, I eat a lot of keto. This is totally off the diet for me. Right now I'm not worried whatsoever about fat loss. It's not a big deal to me if I put on a half pound of fat through this because the idea here is I'm trying to run this race as quickly as I can and I want to be as powerful as I can. When it comes to performance sports, being on a diet is not actually what you want. You want to be in a calorie surplus when the goal is to perform. As soon as Sunday hits, I'm back on the wagon. I'll be cutting again. I'm still trying to lose a little bit more weight through the summer. And having this race over is going to make that window of opportunity much greater. 
For now, I'm only focused on one thing, and that is performing, which takes me to the next point, supplementation. If you guys know me, I don't go anywhere without this. I'm gonna be filling up this bottle with a few different minerals and supplements to make sure that I'm in tip-top shape in the morning. The very first thing we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna be adding a single gram of salt to this water bottle. This is gonna help me stay hydrated throughout the night by maintaining my electrolytes. Before bed, I'm gonna drink an entire one of these, and when I wake up in the morning, I'm gonna drink half. That means in the morning, instead of a full gram, we're gonna go with 500 milligrams. Paired up with that is going to be potassium. Whenever I add salt, I add half the potassium. So tonight we're going to go 500 milligrams. In the morning, I'll be going 250. These two right here is everything when it comes to electrolytes. You really need your salts and potassiums, and they got to be in a really good ratio in order for you to achieve the most benefit. Next on the list, magnesium malate is a very bioavailable form of magnesium. It's going to go a long way at helping with any muscle spasms you might have in a long endurance race. If you've ever hit a Charlie horse and your leg seizes up, it could be a magnesium deficiency. I'm gonna shore up those weaknesses by making sure ahead of time that I'm magnesium tip top. May not be the biggest deal, but a little prevention goes a long way. Now on to actual supplements. This one's nice, beta alanine. So the nice thing about beta alanine it's a mild painkiller. So if you've been to the gym and you build up lactic acid, you know that this lactic acid buildup is going to make it difficult for you, in, especially in long sets, to keep moving. This doesn't stop the buildup of lactic acid, but what it does do is it dulls that pain from it so that you're able to continue working forward. This is especially going to be helpful for me for a very particular reason. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit overtrained. My Achilles tendon in my left leg is actually hurting pretty bad. And I'm going to go over what I'm going to do to remedy that in a little bit. My hope is that tomorrow morning, the beta alanine gives me just enough pain suppressant so I'm able to run this race. Now, I know in an ideal world, I shouldn't really be running on it. But I'm here. I'm not backing out now. I've got to figure out ways to mitigate the pain in my leg so that I can run this race. I think this is going to help. It's not going to be perfect, but all we got to do is make it for two hours next up i take creatine every day this isn't gonna really matter on race day your body is either saturated with creatine or it isn't right now my body's saturated with creatine i'm just gonna make sure that i take it that way nothing changes it takes a few days maybe even two weeks to get creatine saturated so i'm throwing that in there but don't think that a little bit of creatine the night before is gonna do anything it takes time for it to start working Lastly, I've got a blood vessel dilator, which is gonna be citrulline malate. What it does is it slightly expands your blood vessels, greatly increasing blood flow. So this can oftentimes be found in cucumbers and pickles. I'm just gonna take it, put it in my drink. This will actually make me a little bit more vascular. I'm not terribly vascular right now, but if I were to take the citrulline malate, my forearms would be a lot more veiny. The increase in blood flow is incredible for doing cardio-based sports. Also helps for bodybuilding, but especially in racing, particularly Particular, I'm gonna want this just to keep the blood in my body circulating as best as it can. Last but certainly not least, I've got my Fiji waters. The reason I go for Fiji above any other water bottle is because it's a natural spring water. It's gonna have minerals in it that came from the runoff where the water was collected. Any mountain runoff is gonna be incredibly great water for anyone to drink super high in minerals. The reason you're gonna want minerals in your water, it's gonna hit the kidneys and the minerals are gonna stop it from getting filtered out right away. So this means the water going into your body takes more time for the body to use. It means it's gonna retain water better. If you're drinking tap water, it goes right in, right out. You can end up actually flushing your electrolytes by accident by having too much tap water. By having the minerals in the water helps negate that problem. And what I really want to be tomorrow is extremely hydrated. I want my body to be fully optimized. So there's one more thing I'm doing tonight to prepare for this half marathon. I stopped at the grocery store and I picked up two buckets, one for each foot. My original plan was to come and do an Epsom salt bath soak. Unfortunately, this hotel room only has a shower. Right here, I've got Dr. Teal's Epsom salt. In order to try and make my feet better, after I'm done shooting here, I'm gonna go and fill up both of these buckets with hot water. I'm gonna try and soak my feet in them for about an hour. 
with a lot of Epsom salt. I'm gonna use it liberally. My goal with this is to relieve as much inflammation in my left Achilles tendon as possible. This is gonna be my weak point tomorrow. It's gonna to be the thing I'm focusing on to really try to nail this race. All other things equal, I'm feeling very well hydrated. My electrolytes are absolutely peaking and I have smashed the carb load. I have all the cards stacked in my favor. The only remaining factor is unfortunately the ankle pain, which is really unfortunate because I didn't start developing the ankle pain until shortly before the 10K I ran last weekend. I took the entire week off running. I instead cycled at the gym as opposed to running. Unfortunately, the ankle pain is still here even a week later. It's unfortunate. I hate to say it. I'll probably have to take a running break as soon as this half marathon is over to really try to rest up this ankle. But for now, we're giving it all we've got tomorrow. We're leaving it all out there. My goal was to run 210. I'm still holding that goal. And if I can, I'd like to run it faster. I ran a 52 minute 10K, so it is possible tomorrow. If I am pain free, I believe I could run a sub two hour half marathon. We'll see what happens for now. I'm going to get my feet soaked going. I'm going to take it easy at night, get to bed early, try to wake up around 530. I'll check in with you guys to see how I'm feeling in the morning. Whatever it takes to cross that finish line, we are going to hammer it out tomorrow. I'll see you guys on the other side bright and early. So here I am doing my Epsom salt soak. This bucket of water started out McDonald's coffee hot, so I had to three little pigs it until i got it just right a bucket of ice cubes later the feet are doing just fine it's like hot tub temperature it's working out real nice so before i go to bed i do want to talk about the post meal a little bit so doing a run like a half marathon for a guy like me 195 pounds i'm probably burning close to 2,000 calories doing this half marathon now the body is just not supposed to get that kind of exercise on a daily basis so as soon as the race is done, it's also really important that I kickstart my recovery process as quickly as possible. In this particular case, running 2000 calories worth of exercise, my body's gonna be in a state where it's desperately needing recovery. So immediately upon finishing the race, I actually do wanna have simple carbohydrates again. The same carbohydrates I had to carb load also applies to finishing a race. The only difference is now it's okay to have fiber. This is a situation where having some fruit is really nice. Things like bananas, apples, oranges, melons, you name it, it's okay. What I'm really going for here are simple carbohydrates that are immediately getting absorbed into the bloodstream and shooting into the muscles, especially the legs, which are going to be taking the most damage tomorrow. Beyond that, getting some protein in, this is going to be a great way to kickstart the muscle recovery process to start repairing that muscle tissue, potentially even growing muscle tissue. A little bit of protein is going to go a long way with that. The fats are not that important until the next day. So tomorrow is probably gonna be very high carb again, moderate protein, fats could be high, could be low, not a big deal. Now once the race is over, I do plan on going back to my ketogenic based diet. So that means the carbohydrates are gonna go back down to being below 50 grams per day. While I'm racing, all bets are off. So I'm going to hang here for about the next hour, let my feet really soak in this Epsom salt. Fingers crossed guys, hoping this works. It'd be a real shame to make it this far, just to underperform because of a minor injury. Giving it all I got. We'll see what happens tomorrow. The goal is 210. If I can run it under two hours, I'd be over the moon. I'm going to play it by ear. I'm not sure how things are going to go until I actually get there. With that, I'm going to get some sleep. I'll check in one more time in the morning before we start. And then it's on to the races. Hey, good morning, guys. It's 6 a.m., bright and early, getting ready for the half marathon. Right here, I've got a banana. I might have a bagel on the drive there, but otherwise, I'm not going to be eating a whole lot this morning. Um, I've made my drinks. I've got my beta alanine. I've got my citrulline malate. These are going to help me kind of get nice and loose out there, a little bit pain-free today. My ankle still hurts a little bit. I'm going to run through it. I'm going to run through the pain no matter what. I didn't get this far just to quit now, so... Hoping that everything goes well. Gonna smash this banana, bagel on the drive there, and we're gonna get this race started. We'll see you guys on the other side. And now we got Andrew crossing the finish line. 
All right, it's 10 a.m. I just got done with the race. It ended up being 13.4 miles when it was all said and done. Now, I made a big mistake right out of the gate, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. These right here are road shoes. I rode road racing shoes in a trail run half marathon. The truth of the matter is, I looked at the trail map, I saw that it went around the lake, and we have parks in Metro Detroit that are paved all the way around. I thought that this would be a trail, but it would be on gravel, or it would even be paved. It's completely wrong. As soon as we left the parking lot, it was immediately woods from there on out. In fact, I ran over every type of terrain except for concrete. The beginning pace was a little slow. We had to run in single file line. This made passing lanes a little bit difficult. Because of these narrow passing lanes, about the first two miles, I really had to run at the pace of everybody else. This was single file through the woods. Around the three mile mark, we opened up into a meadow. This was the point where I had the opportunity to pick up my own pace and start passing. Around the four to five mile mark, I started to realize just what it was that I got myself into. You see, running in the woods here in Michigan, it never truly gets dry like it does in the south. The trails were very muddy the entire way through the race, and we haven't had a rainfall in almost four days. That just goes to show you just how humid Michigan can be. On top of when we got in the meadows, it was very dewy. It was like running on freshly cut grass for miles at a time. I slipped and fell a few times, hitting every single pebble and rock along the way. My body is a little bit banged up. For those of you that play video games, you'll understand what I'm about to say here. I finished this race on red HP. No more mana, completely out of potions. My body was in pain for unfortunately a majority of the race. Not only was my Achilles tendon slightly flared up, but on top of that, I was continuously rolling my ankle on different potholes and roots along the way. The meadows were especially bad for this, but actually around the seven to nine mile mark, things started to get a lot easier because I was running in the sandy woods. So here in Michigan, we do have a lot of lakes and islands, and the benefit of this is a lot of these little islands have sandy beaches. So even the tree line had a bunch of sand, this was so easy to run in compared to everything else there weren't any roots no slippery grass I was able to get through just fine at this point I knew I only had about four miles left to go I really started to gun it I really started feeling like I had this half marathon in the bag now the incredible thing is despite the fact that this was by far the hardest race I have ever run the hardest course not even close Never run anything like this before. I still finished with a lifetime personal best. My Apple Watch saying at 13.1, I was at two hours and 16 minutes. A little bit behind my own goal, but hey, I screwed up. I didn't pay attention to the course details. I didn't know quite what I was getting into. And I attribute this success to the prep I did. I made sure that I was sufficiently carb loaded. I took really strict care of my hydration. I made sure I was tip top with fluids and salts. My urine was very light yellow. Like I like to say, you wanna make it look like you put in one of those lemon crystal light packets in your water, maybe even half a packet. That's how faint, but that's the perfect ratios for electrolyte balance. And the third thing that I think really helped out I did a lot of therapy last night. For what it's worth, these things did loosen up my ankle a little bit. It wasn't perfect, but it was enough that I could run on it. All in all, I think all of these things contributed to why I was able to succeed in this race. Now I'm literally at the truck, just got done with the course. I'm gonna go over there, enjoy a little bit of food. Later tonight, I'm probably gonna have a sushi dinner. Tomorrow, I'm back to my regular keto diet. With that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and like it. Subscribe to the channel. I'll be getting back to more diet-focused content shortly. Now that my half marathon is complete, I go live every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Check those out. Put me in your pocket. Go for a walk. Do laundry, yard work, etc. I'll be dropping knowledge on you guys for an hour straight. On top of that, original content like the one you're watching right now comes out every Monday. With that, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the live stream. I've been Andrew Fillion. Peace.